Welcome to Asian Noob everyone, let's investigate the newly buffed prelates of the Holy Roman Empire. This is going to be a complex unit to explore with tons of interesting mechanics, so strap in as this is going to be a good one. Also, since prelates affect both your economy and military, I will explore their militaristic utility in a second follow-up video. For now, we'll focus on inspiring our villagers to build the strongest holy economy we can build. Let's dive right in. As always, let's start with some basic stats and fundamental inspiration mechanics. We can train prelates from three different buildings, town centers, monasteries, and the Palace of Swabia, which acts as a town center, of course. All these buildings train a prelate in 20 seconds for 100 gold. As a side note, I've always found that requiring gold for training holy units in the Age of Empires franchise quite ironic, even if it's for game balance reasons. But that aside, the 20 second training time is nice to work with because it's the same time required to create a villager as well, so it'll make it easier for us to analyze trade-offs. Prelates have 90 HP and can move at 1.12 tiles per second, as their movement speed was increased by 12% in the latest patch. Also, prelates unsurprisingly have no armor whatsoever, so of course they are very vulnerable to enemy military units. Furthermore, prelates can pick up relics, convert enemy units, and capture sacred sites from the castle age onward. Keep in mind that all other holy units in the game, namely monks, imams, scholars, shamans, and warrior monks, all cost 150 gold instead of the prelates 100, and train in 45 seconds instead of the prelates 20. Hence, the Holy Roman Empire without a doubt can field their holy units quicker than any other civilization, and can sustain their production much easier as well. And as a final piece of trivia, prelates prioritize healing wounded units first before inspiring them. And as far as I know, you cannot change this automatic interaction, so keep that in mind. Alright, let's get into the inspiration mechanics now. Even though we can manually command the prelate to inspire a villager, simply leaving a prelate's idol in a location will prompt automatic inspiration to any uninspired villager that walks within the inspiration range. In the latest patch, their inspiration range was increased from 3 tiles to 4 tiles, so they cover a much larger area now. Inspired villagers get a 40% buff to their gather rate, and this will be on top of the already strong passive of plus 40% carry capacity for the Holy Roman Empire villagers. This obviously seems like a massive buff on paper, but let's explore the trade-offs first before making any conclusions. The Inspiration command has a low 2 second cooldown, and the Inspired Villagers can keep their Inspiration for 30 seconds. And finally, when we take the Inspiration cooldown of the Prelate, the Inspiration duration of the Villager, and the slight downtime between losing the Inspired status to be casted on again, a Prelate can continuously inspire a total of 8 Villagers at a given time. If you do add a 9th Villager, then that Villager will either never get Inspired, or there will be a significant downtime of Inspiration amongst the other 8 Villagers. Okay, now that we've covered the fundamentals, let's jump right into the tests and see how much of a difference prelates can actually make. Since we'll explore investment trade-offs later in this video, I'm going to use 8 villagers for now as that's the maximum villagers we can inspire with one prelate and I'll calculate the collection rate per minute for said 8 villagers. Hence, I ran a test with 8 villagers collecting resources from some sheep, a wild boar, some farms, some wood, and some gold and repeated it with a prelate inspiring the villagers and here are the results. As expected, 40% faster gather rate does not translate to 40% more resources, as there is a drop-off due to various mechanics such as walk time. Prelates seem to affect lumberjacks the most and farmers the least when it comes to total resources collected. Regardless, a roughly 25-30% to of more resources gathered per minute is still quite high and a great boost to your economy of course. That said, assuming you train the prelate from a town center, you do give up creating an extra villager and paying 50 additional resources as a trade-off, as prelates train in 20 seconds and cost 100 gold. So, is this investment worth the increase in gather rates? Let's first take a look at the upper end of 8 villagers, as that's the maximum a prelate can inspire, and there are two ways we can go about this. First, I'll test again using 9 regular villagers and compare it to 8 inspired ones. This method will ensure equal production time, but not equal resource investment, as prelates cost 50 more resources. Second, I'll also test using 10 regular villages and compare it to 8 inspired ones as well. And yes, this method means that they are equal in resources but not in production time, as the 10th villager will require the additional 20 seconds to train. Here's the table again with all 3 scenarios. If you go by equal production time, then 8 villagers and a prelate easily collect significantly more resources across the board compared to 9 regular villagers. If you go by equal resources, then 8 villagers and a prelate are still slightly ahead of 10 regular villagers. Obviously, 8 inspired villagers and a prelate take up one fewer pop space than 10 villagers and don't require an additional 20 seconds to train, so this means that prelates become a no-brainer in the very late game when you're pop capped at 200. Alright, now that we've covered Inspiration's real resource gathering effects and the trade-offs of training a prelate, when should we really consider adding prelates into our economy then? Well, we already know that 8 villagers and a prelate are better than either 9 or 10 villagers, and since prelates can't inspire more than 8 villagers at a time, that is our confirmed upper limit. This means that we should not train the 9th villager before training a prelate first for sure. 
But how low can we go before it no longer is worth it to train a prelate instead of a villager? The answer depends on the resources you're collecting and how low of a payback time you want, but since most resource collection rates are relatively close to each other, I'm just gonna go for sheep. When I run a test of 6 villagers and a prelate versus 7 regular villagers, the inspired villagers collect roughly 50 more resources per minute, which, coincidentally, is the additional cost of the prelate versus an additional villager. In other words, if you train a prelate every 6th villager, then you'll get 50 more resources per minute on that initial group of 6 villagers, and you'll pay back your additional 50 investment in just 1 minute. The payback time would technically be even lower once you add the 7th and 8th villager to the inspired group as well. This is why you'll often see prelates being trained immediately at the start of the game by HRE players, as inspiring your first 6 villagers that you start the game with is more efficient than adding a 7th villager immediately, and pays back the initial additional investment in just under a minute. Now, the general rule of thumb that I've just shared has two important caveats you need to look out for. One, the assumption is, of course, that the prelates can continuously inspire at least 6 villagers at a given time, and ideally 8 for maximum efficiency. With the newest patch of 4 tile radius for inspiration, achieving this consistently should be fine. And two, upcoming patches may change the timing of the initial training of the prelates as build orders might evolve with time for special openings. Since Age of Empires is a complex game, sometimes it's more important to hit the feudal or castle age quicker stemming from a peculiar build order that evolves maybe a year from now. But if things stay relatively the same, then you can apply this rule comfortably. Train a prelate after every 6th villager you have, but if you want to be more conservative, then don't go further than 8 villagers without training a prelate next, as it becomes a no-brainer then. There's also one more in-game mechanic that you can take advantage of, and that is, of course, the Aachen Chapel landmark. For those of you who don't know, the Aachen Chapel can be built to advance to the Feudal Age for the usual 400 food and 200 gold, and can garrison one prelate to automatically inspire within a slightly larger radius than a prelate. This is important for two reasons. One, it is not uncommon to be able to place an Aachen Chapel within the range of a gold vein, a wood line, and a food source of typically either sheep or farms. Hence, you should be able to consistently able to inspire 20 or more villagers each game depending on your map and setup. This means that you won't have to adhere to the 1 prelate per 6 villagers rule if you choose to go for the Aachen Chapel and can inspire 20 or more villagers at a time. In this scenario, 1 prelate would be able to do the work of 3 or more prelates depending on your setup. Also, note that any villager walking into the range of the chapel gets automatically inspired, which means that the chapel is slightly even more efficient than prelate, as it doesn't need to cast inspiration one by one, doesn't have a cooldown, and doesn't have a cast animation either. That said, if you still have a group of 6 or more miners, farmers, or lumberjacks outside of the range of the chapel, then you should definitely send a prelate there next for sure. Okay, as usual, let's wrap up with a quick summary of what we have uncovered during our tests and some rules of thumb to adhere to in our games. Number 1. Train a prelate for every 6 uninspired villagers you have. You can wait till 8 villagers, but definitely don't train the 9th before training a prelate first. Number 2. Going for the Aachen Chapel means an even more efficient economy straight off the bat, so this means that you can train a few more villagers than usual before needing to train another prelate. If you opt to go for the Mindwork Palace instead, then simply adhere to the 6 to 1 rule as per usual. Regardless of which landmark you choose though, if you have a group of 6 or more villagers collecting a resource without a prelate, then you're doing something wrong. Number 3. Just because prelates have a great economic benefit doesn't mean that you should just leave them AFK with your villagers all game. Remember that prelates can pick up relics, capture sacred sites, and inspire and heal military units during battles, so do not be passive in the castle age. Obviously, each game is different, but temporarily moving away from your economy to at least picking up the relics is often the correct choice, especially if you've built the Regnitz Cathedral to advance to the castle age. Well, that's all you need to know about the economic benefits of the prelates and how they can help the Holy Roman Empire's villagers to gather a lot more in a shorter time. I will be covering the military side of the prelates in the next video, so be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on that one. This video topic was chosen through a poll conducted on YouTube, so if you have a game mechanic that you'd like me to explore in a future video, be sure to vote in the upcoming polls as well. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to add a prelate for every 6th villager you train, and see you all in the next one.